Well, one of the best robberies in Macon for years has been mountain cells in Tattnall. Matter of fact, the year after I got to Macon in 1997, that was the last time the Cavs actually beat the Trojans. Tattnall lost to mountain cells in the regular season, but then beat them in the state title game later in the year. So the Cavs have lost 19 in a row to the Trojans. Both teams have been reeling as of late, with Mountain Cells dropping their last two and Tattnall trying to snap a five-game losing streak. Here we go. Let's head back out north to Jack Baines Field. And we got there. It was 7 to nothing. Trojans. We saw a lot of defense, which is what we want to see all the time. How about this nice play? Brandon Crowder there. Then the quarterback, Miles Morris, going long. But another good defensive play. Nick Allman breaks up the potential catch for the Trojans. So the Cavaliers went to work on offense. Trace Hadaway. It's going to run to his right, but Jacob Dooley gets there and brings him down. Then Adrian Hardwick is going to run to his left. It's going to pick up a few yards for the Cavaliers. Nice play here by Hardwick as they're trying to get some offense going, but there was a lot of defense early on here and throughout the whole game as the Tattnall crowd was being entertained by the cheerleaders. Now the Trojans get it back. Morris, Ahmad Barron, but he's swallowed up by Allman. More good defense for Keith Hatcher's crew. Then Morris to Calvin Slaughter, but there's Allman again for the stop. Tattnall will then put it on the ground. Watch this. It's going to be a fumble recovered by the Cavaliers. Reese Waters comes up with it. Mountain Sales would go for the field goal, but watch this. They would fake it and then the pass would get picked off by Aubrey and Kemp, and he's going to take off and run for a while, but this one would be a huge play because this got called back by a penalty. Tandle would lead it 7-0 when we left, but the Cavaliers would break, break the streak. How about this? They had a touchdown, a missed PAT, and then a field goal. Mount DeSales wins it 9-7. First win since 1997. Big win. They are now 2-3 in the region, while Tattnall falls to 0-5. Still in Region 7, FBD hosted Twigs County tonight. Here we go. Here come the Vikings on the field. And the Cobras were getting ready as well. Fired up, getting fired up on the sideline. Vikings with the ball on their own. 26, Will McCormick handoff. Reggie Gant, and he's going to pick up a nice run here. Through the middle, up the middle, 40, 35, 30. And he's going to go down for a pickup of 29 yards. Then McCormick, screen pass, Daniel Weaver. He's going to pick up about five yards before being brought down by C.J. Morse. McCormick now trying to get things going. Pitches it to Gant, but Tyrese Blackshear is on the job defensively. Throws the Vikings for a loss. The fans were seeing a lot of great defense early on in this game, very early on. Later on, Twix County with the ball. The Vikings defense buckled down. The running game goes nowhere. You guys are supposed to score when we're there. Next play, same thing. Good defense by the Vikings. And they were doing nothing early on. Calvin Stevens, the quarterback, turns, pitches it to Javar Smith. Daniel Weaver with a nice play for FED. You want defense? We've got it. All defense early on. The Vikings would break out, however, after we left. How does that happen? 52 to 38. They win it over Twix County. Vikings have now won three in a row. They are five and four in three and two in the region. Cobras fall to four and five and are also three and two in the region. Now to Wilkinson County as the Warriors hosted region leader Stratford. And here we go on Halloween Eve as the captains met at midfield for the coin toss. Stratford the ball. St. Patrick hands off. Casey Sanders gets uh, a good run here. Bust through. And he's going to score. What a run right there by Sanders for six points after the BAT with seven to nothing. Stratford, Stratford the ball again. Patrick attempts a down foul, pa downfield pass to Sean Williams. Almost picked off here, but Wilco player drops it as he comes down. Still a good defensive play. Now Wilco's turn to try and toss a bomb downfield. They heave it. Tylen Grable attempts to throw it, but oh, the receiver dropped it. Still in the first quarter, Stratford the ball again. A familiar duo there. Patrick gives it to Sanders. He's in there, touchdown Eagles. It was 14 to nothing after the PAT. Wilkinson County needing something to catch up. They would uh, get it here on the kickoff by Stratford. Christopher Burney is gonna get a nice run for the Warriors to try to get something going all the way to the 40 yard line there. But Grable would try to get something going, throws it in the end zone and he's gonna get it for six points right there. Clarence Jackson for the score after the PAT. It would be 14 to seven Stratford. They would win it easily. 42 to 14, they are now seven and two on the season, five and zero in the region. Wilkinson calls the falls to five and four and the play on end games for those six teams will be next week. Tucker Sargent is coming up with our